Now in its 10th year, this is GabNet. Talk like you've never heard it before. Hey everybody, this is Alex live from Harlem in New York City and it's a program called The Ramble. Ladies and gentlemen, there she is, the lovely and attractive Lori Thompson. Hello, Lori. Hello, Alex. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, you know, I'm, I've, I've watched you on, on many things the last couple of days because I've been taking my uh, my Roku channel and adding yeah. adding stuff to it. And I've started adding some of the videos we made of doing the shows at like Live 105. And uh, I have one where I was over at the Quake, which you weren't on, but you're on several of these things. So it's kind of like I'm, I'm spending time with a young, Lori Thompson. <laughs> Lori Thompson. Yeah, well, we had so much fun, and we did a lot of shows. Those Breakfast with Bennett were yeah. always a blast because we got all over the Bay Area. And we did one at Palmason Winery. Oh, we did and, them all. We did them really. It, we, uh, uh, where do we? Well, we. I'm trying to think of the biggest place we ever did one. Uh, but uh, usually the Fairmont Hotel, the uh, Venetian room of the Fairmont Hotel. When Those we did breakfast fun. with Bennett's there, uh, mm -hmm. was just fantastic. It was, and, and then we moved over to what was Bimbo's, right? Uh, and, and the girl in the fish bowl. Yes, yes, yes. They have a th they had a thing in this club. It's called Bimbo's. It's called, yeah, it's called Bimbo's, um, <laughs> and it was a, a club. Um, uh, there was a big major kind of nightclub, really classic nightclub especially during maybe the 40s and 50s yeah it had a cachet in and so history. we did our our last couple of breakfasts with supper with schwarzman's at bimbo's and there was this thing they called the girl in the fish bowl yeah and, and what was it was the, the girl was in the basement lying mm. on a couch or something like that with a, a T fin tails, you know, mermaid costume with the tail <laughs> with the fin on the bottom, and then she would lie there, and then through a series of mirrors. I mean, this went back to the 30s or 40s. With a, a series of mirrors, it all went all the way up to the bar, where there was a fishbowl, and she was projected into it. Yeah, it was a pretty remember? cool gimmick for the time. And you took, you went down there, and <laughs> I think you got on the couch, and I went upstairs and saw you in the fishbowl. <laughs> my big fish, my aquarium debut. Your, your aquarium debut, yeah. So, yeah, we did have a lot of fun with those. But, oh, um, my God, they were a blast. You're going on a major trip this week. You're leaving tomorrow. Yeah, uh, yes, it's a big and, and, trip. And we are actually going to play this the day she's before she's leaving tell them where you're going we are going to lisbon portugal to ah, start off yeah and then we go through italy and through france and we end up in rome and it's a month-long trip so that's the longest we've ever taken now We're are, going is this all by boat yes it is all uh -huh. by boat you're gonna have to tell me about that one because you know we're yeah. thinking of going boat marjorie doesn't yeah. want big boat okay mm -hmm. uh but we're thinking of going boat and the reason we're thinking of going boat is because we're too old to go any other way <laughs> okay because usually well, usually what i would do is i'd rent a car and mm -hmm. drive all over europe but i just don't know if i'm capable of doing that anymore if i'm if i can drive because i haven't driven in a long time yeah well the thing i like about cruises and i had a lot of resistance because as I've said, to me, it seemed like elderly people in matchy matchy clothes playing shuffleboard. And I thought, I'm not that person. Minus and the I shuffleboard, that's Marjorie and I. <laughs> well, the thing about, you know, and the thing about that was that I had a lot of misconceptions. And so once I went online as a tester cruise, I found that you find your people. And there are some cruises that skew more elderly than others. 
and then some with you got to find your niche and we've kind of found an, um, our cruise line which is as Amera smaller ships like usually less than 500 people and a really good uh, crew to uh, passenger ratio mm -hmm. and uh, they just they don't do gimmicky stuff it's not raw raw as we long as my, my my cutoff point is i won't go on any ship that has a ferris wheel yeah you know, <laughs> that, that i, I saw one that i looked at and they they, they were a huge boat right and they were mm -hmm. advertising seven water slides yeah, I mean, uh, even two. Isn't a isn't a water slide since you're on the ocean redundant? Yeah, you know. Well, and and the fact if that you really want to make it interesting, have the water slide go into the ocean and then leave them behind. Well, <laughs> except for the leaving behind part, I think that is a good idea. I would I would like water sliding in the ocean. I just wouldn't be on a boat that had a water slide because. That the the people it would attract would uh, just be a little too wet. So what we want is something. Uh, there's a couple of these things. Like they say, I like well, some of the Viking tours. Yeah, uh, say those are nice. say no no children. Yeah, you know, and, it's not uh, that I don't like children. It's just I don't want to have to be on a boat with them. Yeah. yeah, and plus it's a whole different mentality. Uh, children means it's probably families, and you're going to get all of that all of the things that come with families, you know, some mini dramas and uh, just a lot of noise. Tell me and about that because I have no idea. I've never been a family. Oh. <laughs> you know, I never had kids, right? Uh -huh. You know, right. I've never been a family. Well, and and I, get, know, I get really mad when I hear all these politicians going, and what about our kids? Well, fuck your kids. You know, yeah, do something for me. I'm, I'm, I'm 84 years old. I need a little help. Come on. <laughs> You know, okay. Get me a see, get me a seeing eye, babe. Okay. <laughs> and the, oh, and the service job. I see. I have a little bit of an axe to grind on service dogs because I don't <laughs> think some of these. I think some people just like to travel. What, with their are pets. you talking about service dogs, which are you know help the blind get around? You're. I think what you're talking about is um, um, uh, support Comfort. support dogs. Support animals. Support yeah. animals. <laughs> You know, I'm I'm sure a a, a, a labradoodle, you know, <laughs> for these little <laughs> these little animals that are trying to pass off as support dogs. No, well, because because you it. can pet them and you feel good around them, and it calms you down because you've got anxieties and so on. Screw you and your support dog. Yeah, I mean, I think that they shouldn't people shouldn't take them when they travel it's just because dogs have a certain they you know animals carry a muskier smell than we do and on an airplane last time we flew there were three people with support animals and it starts to smell like a zoo after a while but <laughs> i just know by i think there are a lot of people just skating in on that you know, support animal license that people seem to have. And I, I don't think there's any formal registration yeah. procedure, is there? No. I mean, so, no. so people are just, they're working that system. Yeah, I think you and, go and register your dog as a support animal or something. It's very easy to do. And then you can come along and bring your pet and inflict them on other human beings. Yeah, exactly. And then, like I say, with pets and kids, yeah. the noise levels are higher. Well, I and I'm not. Yeah. Yeah. Pardon? I mean, I I told Marjorie, I said, well, we'll just test these things. I said, don't worry about it. We got the money to do it. Let's just test it. See yeah. if it works, you know, and, and if you're comfortable with it, fine. If you're not, we won't do it that way ever again. Yeah, but be game. That's my motto in life. And just I, be game. I, I want something where I don't have to get off the boat if I don't want to. You know? That's key, see? And sometimes as a couple that becomes a little bit of a conflict because sometimes I just want to stay on the boat and sit by the pool and meet people and hang out and, you know, have my soft serve. But Rick's like gung ho, you know, six o'clock in the morning, he's ready to go and, tra and trape us all around the city. We're gonna go climb uh, Mount Fuji. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah, 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 it's almost like that. And I have a rule, I don't go on excursions that are, that are more than four hours 
but he still sneaks them in sometimes. But I think, you know, the rest should be up to you. I just want the boat to get me to these places. Does he sometimes get pissed off because you're a little bit of a, like, I want to stay back in the boat? Well, so far, I just go along to be a good sport. But that's about to change (laughs) because it's just, like, relentless. Like, on a normal vacation, you have a chance to plan. Yeah, I don't know how I would do doing a month like you i you know a month is a little long for living out of a suitcase basically well yeah and i said why would i want when i have a a two and a half bedroom house why would i want to go and shower every day in a two and a half by two foot cell because the showers are everything is condensed and i'm slightly claustrophobic and i just I thought it doesn't quite make sense unless you're trying to prove something. Yeah. Like I'm a little skittish yeah. on the world cruise, so I told him if I get to the point where I'm just miserable and having no fun at all, I will take a plane home. And he said, "Okay." He said, "I'm not coming home." I said, "Then don't." No, I will. No. I mean, you'll probably it. enjoy it, but I think by the time you're through with it, you're going to be really happy to be coming home. That's what I think. Even after a month, this is the longest we've been gone. What did I do? I think I did a three-week vacation once. Yep. Uh, when I left, uh, when I left uh, uh, Live One Hundred and Five, mm-hmm. uh, I booked a major trip, and I think that was three month, three weeks. And by the end of three weeks, I was pretty squirrely. You know. Yeah. See, and that's what and, I'm and, and it's not that you mind being somewhere else. That's not it. You're just not. You know, when I'm home, I'm with my stuff. Yes, and there's your familiar routine, and you know if you're hungry, you can go to the, you just go get it mm-hmm. in your kitchen. But here, see, they're pretty good. As a has got something for food all of the time, and that's great. But it's not like you can just go in your house and go to the cabinet and get some Cheez-Its, you know, yeah. if you do a little nosh in the night. Right. But uh, that's what... So yeah. I'm wondering about it. That's why I want to give myself an escape clause on the world cruise, yeah. which I have. But this one are you e- are you easy to travel with? I think so. Oh, okay. yeah, you were easy to travel. Well, you with. know what? I'm I'm easy once I'm on the vacation. The first couple of days before the trip, it's uh-huh. all, I start going nuts. See, that I have a little of that, but I got it out of the way last week. For some reason, I thought we were leaving last well, week. So I got all that anxiety out of the way. What it used to be is I used to be afraid of the fact that I I maybe was going to go here, and then I had to make a train to go there, but it was I going to wake up early enough to make the train. What happens if I don't make the train? I go through all of that, right? And I start going yeah. nuts. I start driving myself nuts. And um, that was all fine, uh, but I, I wondered why I did that. And we had Spalding Gray on the show. The Swimming to Cambodia was his book. Yeah, the phenologist. And who committed suicide, by the way. I know, how sad. Yeah, well, anyway, seemed- he committed suicide. But he, I said to him, I said, I have this thing, because I, we were talking about trips and so on. I said, I have this thing. And I told him what I told you. And he said, oh, I'm the same way. He said, mm-hmm. absolutely the same way. And I said, well, marvelous. Uh, why do we do that? And he said, because we're control freaks. See, that and I said, like, what? Oh. And he said, yeah, we're control freaks, and we want to anticipate everything that can go wrong so when it yeah. does, we have control over it. Right, and the things that throw you are not the things you thought of. It will be something that you never could have predicted. But I'm more roll with the flow. You know? yeah. I, the way I look at it, spontaneity is one of our best gifts. Yeah. And you can roll with the flow because you're not going to be able to control every aspect yeah. of a trip. It just doesn't happen. You know, layovers yeah. and meeting your so, next plane. So, so basically, this is a is a Mediterranean cruise. Yes, is, is yes. what it turns out to be. Uh, you said, did you say you were going to Ibiza again? No, we're going to Barcelona though. Bar, 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 Barcelona. Barcelona. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and. Uh, it, that's one of my favorites. Do you towns. remember um, when we were in Barcelona? You were in Barcelona with me, right? Oh, yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Do you remember the Elton John concert we went to? Oh, gosh, I do. One of the most memorable like concerts of my life. Yeah. You know, you, you think, oh, Elton John, he's done a couple of hits. He comes out and for two hours plays one hit 
after another, and you send, and you suddenly realize the, the the breadth of this guy's talent. It was amazing, just amazing. Oh, he because he is an entertainer yeah. par excellence. Now yeah. I want to he... say that you've been doing something that was very nice. Uh, I told you that I, you know, I had these high white blood cell counts and this high lymphocyte count. Yeah. And um, I, uh, uh, you know, I was kind of bothered by it. And um, I, my doctor told me to go to an oncologist and you started praying for me. Yes. Did you exactly. actually pray for me? Yeah. 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 That's what, and I pray that you'll have peace with whatever they find, just that you'll have peace about it and that everything will work out. Because, you know what I mean? You know, Why should I ever pray when I've got somebody who can do it for me? <laughs> you get the Pentecostal in the pocket. Hey, hey, God, when I get up there and God says, you know, you didn't ever pray to me, I go, well, you know, my friend Lori did, and so is it doesn't <laughs> count for something. Yeah. Now, you I can coach Actually, I, oddly enough, I say a prayer every night before I go to sleep. Is it, yeah, That's it's something reassuring. most people don't know about me. I don't uh -huh. think even Marjorie knows it. <laughs> yeah. But that's that's sweet. It's reassuring. Yeah. But anyway, so yeah. I, because I had these health problems, you were. Uh, oh, well, let me. Did I tell you about the report I got back? That the doctor didn't call you back, or anything? no, he didn't call Is me back. Well, here, hold on a second. I still have one over here. Hold on. Uh, uh, <laughs> just stay where you are. Okay. Um, <laughs> What he, what I went and I decided that what I would do is I would get the, um, the uh, what do you call it, the, uh, the actual report that he did, the guy that he never got back to me. Yeah. Right? And yes. on page five, I get this. You can't it read it. Be, but no, it looks to be the diagnosis. Well, and it's in red, right? Yeah. Which yeah, and the diagnosis time. that they made from this flow cytometry analysis was that I have lymphocytic, chronic lymphocytic leukemia. Okay, well, that was on page five. He never got back to me. He never that, got back to me. What are you know? What are you paying him for to know that I, something well, that I, is well, no, it's not me paying him. It's Medicare, but <laughs> you know. Uh, but I get I get this. And I look at it, and I go, uh, well, I better just print up the whole report. And I gave it to this new doctor I went to, okay? Yeah. And he said, oh, I'm glad you did this. I, you know, this really is helpful, you know? Sure. And uh, because Marjorie said, why, why are you printing that stuff out for him? Man, I, yeah, and he, he was, it's in my files now over at, uh, over at, uh, uh, wait, wait a minute, Marjorie is calling on my phone here. Your doll, wait, your sweet wait a minute. Eye. Marjorie, don't you know that I'm doing something I, with I Lori? Know, I know, but what did you want <laughs> to Hi, Marjorie. Besides what? Chicken breasts and legs. What? What did you say? What did you want besides chicken breasts and legs? <laughs> uh, I wanted uh, some um, the mozzarella cheese. Okay. Oh, no, wait a minute. I have mozzarella cheese. I don't need what? it. So you don't need anything? I just need the meat. I got the meat. Mm -hmm. Okay, bye-bye. Oh, okay. She called. See, I, now, she knew I was doing something with you, and she called. But still, that's pretty sweet. A anyway, I mean, was, anyway. So yeah. getting back to this, okay. Yeah. The so so I hand it to him, and I say, you know, this was on page five of that report. If you got that, then you know, the following Monday or whatever, what would you do? He said, Well, I would call you. Yes. And tell you yeah. that there's something a little bit concerning in the report, right? Yes. He said, in fact, I'd call you even if it was all good. See, it's all <laughs> you good. Know, you know. Yeah. Right? That is I said, I never heard from the guy. Never heard from him. That's, that's but, nutty. And, they, and, they they, should, uh, and he said, where did you go? Life. And I said, I went to the cancer and blood specialist. He says, oh, them. <laughs> they have a rep. <laughs> anyway, anyway, so um, I had that, and and I uh, so I handed it to him. He said, "What you have," he said, "is chronic lymphocytic leuke leukemia. I have leukemia, but but that's the that's the 
the worst possible, the worst part of the news. The best part of the news is it's all good. This is it's a form good. of leukemia that people my age have a tendency to get. It's the most common leukemia in America and the most curable, not curable, but you but, never cure. Uh, the, the, the line they use is, you will not die from this, you'll die with it. Perfect. Okay. You know, we're all and he die, said, as long as you don't have symptoms now, we're not going to do anything. He says, your platelets are a little low, so I want to have you come in in a couple of weeks, about, eight, about uh, uh, what was it, uh, eight weeks or something, come back, and we'll do another uh, platelet count. On you. Yeah, just monitor and, it. And that's it. And we'll monitor you on and off. And I met this doctor. He's really a great doctor, a wonderful doctor. And he's very comforting. And he said, you know, all these high numbers you see in here are all a result of that same thing, you know. Mm -hmm. And he said, yeah. uh, none of the numbers are high enough that I'm concerned. Because, you know, when you look at it and they say blah, 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 high, and it's on a graph and it's up towards the top of it. <laughs> You don't know what you don't know what high is supposed to be. He said you could be high on a lot of these things, and it just never you know it's not horrible because it's not terribly high. Yeah, it's normal. It's within the standard. So he said you're in, you're in good enough. You're in good shape. You have no symptoms. He said we'll just watch it. You know. Yeah. And I That's I wouldn't you... mind going back to this guy every three to six months and uh, <laughs> dealing with him because he's a nice guy and he's a very it kind of makes you feel, if you walk out and you feel better than when you walked in. So that, that's, that's how it turned out. So I have leukemia. So now, now I have an excuse for when Marjorie says, uh, by the way, we ha you have to take out the garbage tonight. I go, I, I can't, I got leukemia. <laughs> so much better than my back aches. Now, now this, <laughs> this is my, this is my second them. cancer. Because you had the prostate. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. But and they seated that, and now you're. Yeah, and good. so now this, they're just sitting and waiting, and they say, he, they say he has one guy, he's been seeing for uh, thirty years or something like that, with this same thing, and he's never shown symptoms. So. Yeah. And he says, it, and then I said, what happens if I show symptoms? He says, used to be I had to go in for radiation, you had to go in for like you know, uh, but what do they call it that where they put poison in your veins and stuff, you know. He said, Ooh. now it's just a little pill that you take once a day and it doesn't even affect you. Yes, he said, but it, clear, it. It, it, it lowers all the stuff in the leukemia. So it's very easy to take care of. Good, so, good, good. See, so that's what said, you want. I, I you just know, don't I, want to feel crappy. Keep you know, me from feeling crappy and I'm, I'm 84 I'm years old to get this kind of leukemia. Hey, okay, I'll, I'll go. I'll go with it. You know. Yeah, yeah. And by the and way, I, I've had it for a year, because you got to remember this other test was done a year ago. Oh yeah, and you're still and doing my, fine. And my condition has not changed at all. You know. Yeah. See, and it's non-symptomatic. I don't right. mind those non-symptomatic things. It's just when you hurt. Yeah. I am not a fan of hurt. And that's what I, that's what I go to the doctor for. Make the hurt and go away. Make the hurt and go away. Well, here I'll show you this. This is wonderful. I bruise when they take uh, when they take blood. Look at uh -huh. that. Wow, that's a that is a woozy. Um, man, it looks like you got punched in a bar fight. Yeah. Well, right. what, do you take uh, any of those like cumidin or anything that'll make you bruise easily? No. No, I no. just always when they give me the shot, I, I sometimes wind up with a minor bruise or a huge one. Wow, that's mm -hmm. interesting that something just like a needle prick would do that. Well, but, I think this, they put it in a little deeper and it's, you know, changing uh, tubes and stuff. Because they took about five tubes of blood out of me. Woo, yeah. it must be valuable. And They're then I go into the hospital. This is the best part. They got this thing called my chart. Which they have, chart. a lot of hospitals have it. It's called My Chart, and you you sign on it's to My perfect. Chart, and you go over there, and you can see when your appointments are, and so on and so forth. Yeah. And there's an area important. called Tests, and they give you the results of all your tests. Five minutes after I gave this blood, my watch goes off. You have some messages on your My Chart. 
they were starting to post all the blood stuff. And today the last one came in, I think. And well, that's pretty cool. Yeah, little but they, all, they all kept they, they came all came in within a day or so. Most of them. That's yeah, an efficient lab yeah, will do but, that for you. But anyway, so but, that's my. I want to thank you for praying for me. Well, I want to thank for uh, for you being fine. Yeah, essential. You, you didn't fine. have to speak in tongues to be that efficient, did you? Um, I didn't have to. Wasn't required. It's not like you go and sit to say a prayer. It is, where's your paper? Come on. Are you willing to speak in tongues? And but yeah. it's uh, yeah, it's effective. I just do prayer. It's been a part of my life since I was an infant, and so it just it's it's kind of meditative, and it just makes me feel better about life. Yeah. And it makes me feel better about people and my relationship to them. Well, listen so, here. I want to wish you a pleasant journey. Thank you. Have a nice trip. Okay. And we will uh, we will uh, see you when you get back. Uh, okay. However, in the intervening weeks, there will be videos of you because we put a lot of them in a in a in a vault, and we okay. release them <laughs> once a week. So we'll see you next week here, but we'll see you when you get back, ladies and gentlemen. That there is Laurie Thompson. Bye, Laurie. Bon voyage. Bye, babe. <laughs> Now in its 10th year, this is GabNet. Talk like you've never heard it before. Ah, yes, Lori Thompson. That was a rerun, by the way. And here's the reason it was a rerun. She was in, uh, she was in New York this week. And we were going to do one of these things. And uh, I decided, uh, you know, it was getting late. We'd had dinner and I, I didn't want to go ahead and do it, so I said, I'll just rerun one this week. And I picked one, and it was one where she I was saying she was going to Europe and doing all of that, and it's the wrong ones to do. Sorry about getting on late tonight, folks. Uh, we, uh, you know, every now and then there's a problem. It always happens when I first go on on, uh, on Wednesdays because something wasn't set up or it wasn't set to go, and, you know, you wonder why, and... Anyway, so it was not uh, it was not all that uh, terrific, and we had some problems, and I don't know exactly what the problem was, but we solved it, and that's all that mattered. But uh, uh, I just wanted you to know that you know this was what was going on. So we solved the problem, and here we are, and uh, we have a whole bunch of people that want to get on with us here. And uh, let me um, let me see here. First of all, let me do this. Let me go to the Zoom panel here, and then let me uh, take this up to uh, admit all. And there's one person here. I just want to make sure they're okay. Yes, okay. All right, they're good to go. Okay. And uh, I think what I will do now is I will. The transition. There we go. There we are. There's our people. Hello, everybody. How are you? How are you feeling, Alex? I'm feeling. I'm you're, feeling. I'm you're over feeling, that shot. Yeah. Uh, oh. Oh. I, I had. Well. I. It, last time. Let's see. When did you see me the last time I Monday, had? Monday. Yeah. Uh, oh, that you shot. You talked about it on Monday. Yeah. No. Uh, Monday or Tuesday or oh. whatever. Anyway. Uh, yeah. That was the uh, the day they gave me all the shots at one time. And that uh, that uh, next day, I was not feeling well. I mean, every bone in my body was aching, and so on. And then I was okay. Then I was okay, you know. So you, t uh, you told us about it last week, also. Well, he j yeah. I just asked about it. <laughs> I know. Do you listen to what we're doing Monday. here? It's, it's not five minutes yet. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it, 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 you know, uh, no, he he wanted to know. He wanted an update of what happened. Got it. And I gave him the update. Okay. That'll teach you to get all three shots. Uh, one time. Huh? Sorry. That'll teach you to get all three shots at one time. I'll do it again. I don't care. I want to get them over with, you know. There's one I don't haven't had yet, and that's a follow-up pneumonia shot. I've had my pneumonia shot, but there's supposedly now you can do another one that will uh, give you 20% more protection or something like that. 
Yeah, that's right. It used to be yep. called Prevnar 16 mm -hmm. and, or 14 or 13 or something, and now it's called Prevnar 20. Oh, really? Okay. It's about a year apart, too. I'm sorry? The shot, the two, the Prevnar shot should be a, to a year apart, I think. Oh, really? Yeah, but you don't do a booster. You just... No, I, but... I got one in one year, and then in the following right, right, year, yeah. the same month, You're, I got the second. Absolutely. That's, well, that's we're gonna correct. we're gonna ask them first, you know, whether we should have it or not, you know. And they, they you know, the, the drugstore, they seem to know when you're supposed to have stuff. See, my problem was we used to go up to the Rite Aid here all the time to get our shots, and we liked them a lot, you know. Um, and all of a sudden, they went bankrupt. Uh, and so they moved all our records over to the CVS down the street. And I'm not that hot about CVS, you know? I mean, they're good for Band-Aids, but that's about it, you know? And uh, so we went down there to get it. And the first time we went down, they couldn't get our information from Medicare because Medicare was offline or something. So we had to come home, and that's when I took my fall. So we had to wait a couple of days before we turned around and went back down. But geez almighty, you know, was I, was I ill the day after that shot, those shots? But, you know, now I'm well, and I probably won't get COVID, and I probably won't get the flu this year. And what was the other one I took, RSV? RSV. That's the one that knocked me out. Really? I bet that's probably the one that knocked me out, too. But uh, who knows? I took three of them, so it could be any one of them. But anyway, so, you know. Anyway, a little sorry, folks, that I had some trouble getting on tonight, but we managed to, uh, we managed to survive it, so uh, we're okay. Uh, and, I, you know, I still don't know what went wrong or what the problem was, but... Uh, uh, once I did something here, it, it clicked it in and everything was fine. So here we are. Mm -hmm. So what's new, everybody? Josh? Working my butt off. What? I'm still sort of working my butt off. I've been negotiating with the city of Austin this week to try and get the umpires a raise. We hadn't got a raise in two years. The, the, the city of Austin pays the umpires? Yes. Okay. Do they pay the players? Players are not professionals. That's just recreation for them. Oh, I see. And players pay the city. I hmm. see. And for the ability to play. Yep. And then the city pays the umpires. Yep. Okay, I get it now. Yeah. So it makes That's it. been fun this week, yeah. How's it been fun? <laughs> it hasn't been fun. It's a pain in the butt. <laughs> oh, I see. Okay, you're saying they that's... don't want to give us a raise, but you know, this, the last two years have been the worst years for inflation in, in like in decades. But, yeah. How much of a raise? How much of a raise do you want? Ten percent. And you yeah. get. I hate to ask what you're getting paid now, but probably ten percent of whatever you're getting paid now yeah. is is bupicus, right? It's nothing. Well. Let's put it this way. The cities in the suburbs of Austin, umpires get paid more than what we get paid. And that's part of my argument. How are we going to keep umpires and all they got to do is go to one of the suburbs and work there for more money? And if you don't do it, you're, you know. Yeah, then it's hard to keep umpires and then you end up having, you're supposed to have two umpires per game. And a lot of times we can't do that because we don't have enough umpires. Wow. That's terrible. That's terrible. Well, I'm sorry to hear it, and I hope that things get better. You know? That's why my hair is getting grayer. <laughs> grayer? Yeah. You're how old now, and are you grayer? No, I'm 74, but, you know. You're 74. a little black in there, you know. You can see Remember, it, this will make you feel bad. You're 10 years younger than I am. I know. That's how I follow. I, I know what your age is because it's 10 years older than me. Yeah, yeah. And um, and, and you're going to have to give up on it because uh, I, I'm not planning on getting any older. I'm, I'm not dying. I'm not dying. I'm just I'm, I'm going to remain 84. 
until you catch yeah. up to me. Okay. okay. And then we My can... sister already did that, so we might as well too. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, I went to I went to uh, uh, PT today, mm -hmm. physical therapy. Boy, is that weird. <laughs> it just, you know, for a guy to begin with, I've never been athletic. All right? And so to ask me to do exercises is, you know, yeah, you know, like, uh, I don't know. Well, I've asked them, ask them if sex is considered exercise. You'd be happy to do that. <laughs> I can't do that anymore. You're doing it right. <laughs> You remember okay. you remember when they took my prostate remember. and put it out on a rock and beat it to a fair they will? <laughs> yeah, they have a uh, thing that Phil's using that I recommended that his urologist has given him. It's a compounded product. It's three things. It's called Trimix, and you inject a little bit into your penis, yeah. <laughs> and it makes and it makes you hard. Oh yeah. <laughs> You know, I, 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 if it worked for Phil, would it work for you? I, I like to get erections. They're good. They're fun. They're, you can do something with them, okay? Absolutely. If you have somebody to do some something with it with, okay? Uh, but I'm sorry. I'm not doing anything of injecting nope. anything into my penis to get a, get it erect. I'll live without sex. Uh, I, I get it. It's no problem. Phil couldn't do that, so. No, Phil it's will so try cool. anything. Yep, absolutely. I mean, is this a including, real? Including it... sound waves for $7,500. What? <laughs> what do you think you did last year? Remember, you t tried to talk him out of it, that 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 shop that tells you we'll, we'll do sound waves, ultrasound through your penis, and it'll make it erect, and you said you're wasting your money, and. He asked me, and I said, I think Alex is right, and didn't do any good. Go on a couple of cruises for that kind of money. Yeah, right. Ooh. There you go. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and so so now he got the, he's getting these injections, and are they working? Yeah. Hmm. But I mean, when you only have three inches, does it really matter? No, it doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, also, does he have to get them every time he wants to have sex? Oh, that's He's got a prescription of them, and he, I, I don't know if he do, if he adds the dose out of a bottle like they do, or if it comes pre-mixed. Wait a minute, does he drink. inject himself? Yes. Yep. And they even this... have an auto-injector for the thing if you can't do the, you know, you just stick it up like like a, like a an EpiPen, you know. How much does that there. cost? <laughs> It's not extra, I'm sure. I don't, yeah, the auto injector, I think he said was $75, but the drugs are covered under, um, you know, his prescription wow. and with Kaiser. So I don't know. It's commonly used for people that, I mean, I, I couldn't imagine sticking a needle in there. But anyhow, I think I'd go like you, Alex, and just say, forget it. Yeah, hmm. well, you know, in my case, they, uh, <laughs> but it's called, but if you, if it's, it's called Trimix. It's a compounded product they compound in the pharmacy, and it's it's good. It works for. I have friends of mine that have problems, and they use it for whatever. You well, know. I it's not that I have a problem. I don't have any problems anymore. <laughs> you right. know, the problem was when I in the old days when I would get a hard on was to find somebody to use it with. You know. So, uh, you know, the fact that I am in a state, I'm 84 years old. I, I had a it. lot of good years with that thing working. Man, I put, I, 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 I'm amazed it lasted as long as it did, you know? Uh, yeah, I, a lot of my friends my age, I'm 65, are needing to use Viagra and stuff, and I still don't. No, I mean, I went for, uh, hell, I went for 80 years with that thing just working just fine. Yeah, well, you know, and I got a lot of fun out of it. And then uh, they did all this stuff, and I got the prostate cancer, and it uh, pretty well stopped the thing from, you know, I mean, yeah, you know, I mean, I can get some kind of an erection. So how's the rest of your day going? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I didn't mean for it to get so involved. No, but, but I'm just you know, now you have something if you if you. 
if Marjorie all of a sudden rolls over one night and says, boy, I wish you could get an erection, you say, let me go ask the doctor. I don't think this stuff would work for me. I really don't. Okay. I, I mean, there, you know, I mean, what I, my problem is, is that uh, they did a lot of work on that play. You know, they did radiation and they did right, the seeds right. and everything yeah, like I that. All that was, well, they removed pills, so... Yeah, had a, a, completely removed, and then radiation, and then other things. So well, I don't understand how he can even get an erection, but you know, the medicine yeah. brings well, blood to that blood. area, and just like your brain would. Well, so does so does Viagra, so do a bunch yeah. of those things. That's yeah, how they work. Yeah, but, but some of those things are risky. Um, it to for anybody, but they're even more risky as you're older because they can cause heart issues. They don't mix well with a lot of different drugs, so I don't know. I'm not. What do you mean? My, my up until recently, my uh, my urologist been prescribing it to me. Okay, well, I'm sure he knows good. better than you do. You know. Yeah, yeah. It sounds like you're you're able to get a an erection easy. Well, no, I'm I I, I can't anymore. I I, oh. I mean I can I can get. What can I call it? Semi. Mm -hmm. Semi erect, yeah. Semi erect, okay. yeah, yeah. All right. But, you know, I mean, I don't care anymore Good. because I don't have the drive any longer. So because I, I don't have the drive, how am I going to miss it? Uh, yeah. Ten years ago, I, I couldn't go more than a couple of days. Now I can go a week. Yeah, but you look how much younger you are than I am. Yeah, but I'm I'm still I'm slowing down there too. Oh well, you know, I'm I'm sure you are. You know. It happens. It's a natural thing. You, your testosterone drops as you get older. Yeah, cool. yeah. But, you know, as I say, I never had any problem until I was about 80, until this whole prostate problems happened. And, uh, you know, it was a difference between dying or... Uh, or Absolutely. You know, you know. I think you made the right choice. Yeah, I made the right choice. I would I have think. done... This, I would do the same thing right now at 65 if I had to. Mm -hmm. I would I would have the prostate, the cancer taken care of. Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, uh, F Phil did, you know. Right, right. Oh, yeah. I mean, I don't understand how this this these injections are helping, but I guess they are, so. If you Google Trimix, T-R-I. And, and, and so how, here, what happens? You take this Trimix, right? You inject it into your... God, right. Every time you say that, I get this pain. Yeah, I know, I know. <laughs> uh, well, I, 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 you can ask Phil more detail, but you inject a, a certain amount. The doctor tells you how much to start with, and a half hour later or so, it keeps you erect. And I don't know for how long. Um, I'm not a urologist, but I do have friends. Here we go. Oh, he's showing you know? it. Yeah. Yep. There it is. Well, I, I this is the. Is that is, is that an over the counter drug from Amazon? I doubt. Um, yeah, it would be pharmacy. A it's a pharmacy. pharmacy. I think you have yeah, to. Have there's Amazon pharmacy. pharmacy. You can get your drug. Right, but you you can get it from your doctor, and I, I have no idea what the retail cost is. I have no idea what any of that is, but it works for him, <laughs> and it's important for him. He's got this new girlfriend, and hmm. you know, so. Uh, <laughs> You know. Well, I'm happy for him. Yeah, well, me too. I, I, I have a couple of friends that are younger, much younger than me, 20 years younger than me, but they took they take HIV drugs because they have AIDS, and that interfered with their erection when they were 25. Mm -hmm. And so Trimix was a godsend for them. So. Yeah, but still, you got to inject it somewhere you don't want to inject it. Yeah. That's for sure. Hell, mine would shrivel up and disappear if it's on a needle. It's already out. done that. Yeah, really, uh, the moon. <laughs> it's already done that. Yeah, so anyway, let's say hello to Josh. How are you, Josh? I'm good. How are you? He's here on a Monday, and now he's beginning to wonder why. <laughs> it's Wednesday. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> this isn't Monday, is it? It's Wednesday. No. no. Boy. It's Wednesday. What? Yeah. So anyway, um, um, nothing much is happening. I don't think. Are we having much uh, action with the uh, with the election with all of that? 
All I know is that I tune into WNB, uh, w, uh, MSNBC, rather, and constantly all they're talking about is Trump. Trump, 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 Trump. I'm so yeah, sick of hearing about Trump. Well, he keeps making these outrageous statements. No, but he made this outrageous statement, what, a week ago, right, about the dogs and the cats. Yeah. And, and it, that's still, fine. You can discuss that, down. discuss that and complain about it for a day. But in the case of MSNBC, they're still talking about it. Mm -hmm. They're still closing down the schools and, and, and whatever. Well, they're, still, they're getting bomb threats in that city. Yeah, because all the bomb Ohio, threats. So, you know, it's all because of him. I mean, he we, we get it, MSNBC. He's an asshole. We of get course. it. He came to Nassau Coliseum today mm -hmm. and um, he oh, gave yes. him an hour and a half show. Oh, yeah, yeah. he did. Didn't but he, he didn't mention Springfield, except to say he's going there and he's going to Aurora. I may not come back, but we'll see. But he's, go he's going to Springfield? He wants to hold a, a rally. Why not? Or whatever there. not enough anxiety there. Do you think they really want him there? In fact, they don't want him there. According to J.D. Vance, they didn't want them coming because they felt that they had enough uh, people paying attention to them. They didn't he, need he, more. He, he yeah. mentioned it. But why Why waste your effort in New York? You're going to get killed in New York. But he says he's going to win. Mm -hmm. Tony, says, Tony was texting me earlier, and he said that uh, Trump is in his neighborhood in Queens or something like that. So I no, said, he's on Long Island, isn't he? Caravan. It's Long Island. Right. It's oh. just over the border. Isn't it? Yeah. I, I I don't know New York that well, but I, I told Tony to get out in the front yard and throw rocks at the caravan. Where did, where did you do it, by the way? In um, in Nassau Coliseum. Nassau Coliseum. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It holds about 20,000 people, I think, something like that. Did he it, fill it? They didn't turn the camera around, so. Yeah. The other day, he was doing a, he, the was other day, he was doing a rally where he was talking about how Kamala was wrong and rude about the fact that he didn't, he had people walking out on his, uh, uh, on his, uh, you know, speeches. Yeah. And uh, complaining about it in the speeches, blah, 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 da, 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 da. And uh, as, as he's talking about this and saying how ridiculous that is, people took pictures of people who were getting up and walking oh, wow. out. Yeah. Yeah, the governor, um, Sarah Huckabee Sanders, said uh, she held the town hall. And the first 20 minutes was a love affair between the two of them. And he just yeah. was rambling. And they got to about four questions. And somebody said, uh, like, what are you going to do for our manufacturing, our car manufacturing industry? What's the biggest major threat? And he said, it's nuclear war. So mm -hmm. it, it went downhill from there. Yeah, well, he uh, the the interesting thing is is that he is uh, uh, he's been saying that he uh, uh, oh, no, I forgot what I was going to say. Forget it. He said uh, he he was he was trying to talk about Anwar in Alaska. He said Biden closed down uh, Bagram up there in Alaska, which has most oil of anything. So he, he got Anwar. Anwar and, and Bagram confused in Afghanistan, oh, and they he, tried to smoothen it out. Yeah, here's the thing. He's just started this whole new thing. What is it? Do you know what it is, uh, Josh? It's a, it's a, he's selling uh, uh, bitcoins, right? Oh, yes. Yeah. This, this is horrible. Yeah, and when I, they, I heard he was getting into that and, business. And probably. when they interviewed him, he doesn't know what bitcoin is. I mean, come on! I'm I'm an idiot about money, and I know what Bitcoin is. How many people here know how Bitcoin works? Anybody? A little bit. I mean, it, I know how it works. There's a lot about that electronic currency, you know. Yeah. But, but if you're selling it, you at least should know what you're right, yeah, selling, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. Well, it's, I it's, mean, if I were gonna, you know, it's garbage. Yeah. Yeah. It's, if I were gonna be a franchisee for, you know. McDonald's, I would probably know how to cook a hamburger. I mean, that's <laughs> right. <laughs> I want a hamburger. You're going to have chicken. You go, yeah, he's maybe, cooking you know, and he's the opposite. <laughs> it's terrible. So, the, the interesting thing about Trump, you're talking about Trump, yeah. is his stock is at the lowest price. Yeah. And tomorrow is the 
he can sell what, it, right? What you call the date? He can start selling it tomorrow. But it it it, it started out at like yeah. sixty. Yeah. And now it's down to fifteen dollars. Yeah, I'm tracking it too right now. And how much? Uh, how much? Didn't he have to buy it? Yeah, he he's he wanted to he wanted to sell it earlier. He was trying to do a shenanigans with the FCC, and they wouldn't let him do it because he knew wow. it would tank. Yeah. Yep. Well, he didn't yeah. know it would tank. You never know with the stock, but it sure has tanked. It's dropped sixty six percent since he since the first shot attempt. The second one doesn't count. The guy didn't get a shot off, but you know, That's but times. There wasn't I mean, any, the idea. He, you can't count the second guy out. Uh, how do you define an attempt? Yeah, well, I, yeah, well I, that's what I want to know. Picked up on that they a little. I mean, the visual but, range of Trump. How they is that? Probably, probably in the media keeps referring to it as an attempt. They should probably refer to it as a plot. Yeah. I, I agree, like if you Austin. can't carry out the. I mean, I guess what I'm saying is if, if you and I plan to drive our vehicle into the Capitol building and blow it up. And we drive to Washington D.C. and they arrest us. Did we attempt to blow up the Capitol, or did we have a plot to blow up the Capitol? Well, right. was I mean, it? I, that's what I mean. You know, I guess if you want to argue the, the details of it, whatever doesn't, it doesn't plot, matter. Doesn't but, a plot indicate several other people involved? Well, that's then you call it a plan. But oh, okay. I mean, no, I don't think it has to. I mean, if yeah. you know, I, I could plot to, yeah, one person could plot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you know. But, you know, I mean, I mean, with what you're saying, I think would be more toward conspiracy. Right. You know, that's got to involve more than one person. But, but he, I mean, makes yeah, a big, he makes a big deal out of it. Referring to it as an attempt, you know, and I think at first maybe they got on that because they heard there were some shots fired or whatever. Yeah, they were My understanding is the, you know, security fired on the person. Right. You know, which, and I'm, I don't know why and they he fired, fired him. He Apparently fired. saw him stand up with a weapon or something along those lines. I'm, I would assume. And I, am, I yeah, believe, I, they saw I, I believe he fired in the air, too. I, yeah. I, the information that I last saw was that his weapon had never been discharged. Or was right. not discharged. And I don't want to say never, like at a range or anything, but he had not discharged his weapon during the incident. I, yeah. I think the real question here is, if this was a a trip that was unplanned, uh, how did he know? Yeah, go golf. How did he know twelve hours in advance to camp out there? Well, did I don't know that he did. I think that was the point of. I would assume, you know, uh, sense would say that Trump mm -hmm. golfs a lot on the weekends. This yeah. is where he golfs when he stays at Mar-a-Lago because there is no course at Mar-a-Lago. Mar-a-Lago, you know, he golfs at this course and he owns a few miles away or whatever. So you know. If there's an accessible spot and you hide out there for long enough, he's going to drive by. It's well, one possible answer to your question yeah. there, Alan, is that uh, I believe his schedule is always published of what Over. he's going to do on any given day. I don't know. And there was probably some place this guy could look up the fact that he was going to be playing golf. The interesting thing was the Secret Service shot into the bushes and missed. And so missed. There, That's all. There's, there's as bad a shot as the first guy, and, yeah. the, and and I mean I'm not making a joke. I don't know how you could shoot in the bushes and not hit the guy with the the rifle barrels. Well, you might not be. He might be hidden in the bushes and you can't see him, so you're not yeah. aiming at the exact. But, but I don't. I don't. I don't really think they said who shot him. I uh, or I don't necessarily know that a perched sniper spotted him and shot at him. It very well could just have been a ground agent who had to pull a sidearm and shoot at him with, you know, this time, a nine millimeter sidearm from a hundred yards away is a hard target for a guy. For in, anybody. You know, so I mean, you know, if he got off a few rounds and the guy ran through the woods, that was probably the end yeah. of it. That's what they're talking you know. about. Yeah. Yeah. So, they, they said that Trump was yeah. out of range. Well, this was not an AR, yeah. which is a 22 bullet. With a rifle cartridge, the the the, the gun of choice. This was an an SKS, which is an AK-47 knockoff, right. and it shoots a 30 caliber bullet that goes a lot farther. It's a lot more deadly, like four to five hundred yards. And this guy had a scope on it, so yeah. he was he was planning on doing damage. That, but apparently not enough because he what did you know he was lying there and he could see that I guess the president through his scope 
And he, he didn't fire he, said he did not have line of sight on the president. He did not he have line of sight. Never had line of sight so on So what we're Trump. saying is Trump is complaining about something that never happened. That's right. You know, and then he's sending out, he's complaining that the Democrats cause all these problems. How do the Democrats? And, and J.D. Vance said, you know, if, if they weren't causing the problem, why is it nobody's trying to shoot uh, 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 Kamala Harris? <laughs> yeah, right. And the answer to that Kamala. one is because people like her. <laughs> yeah, <that's laughs> you know that also the way they go about it, it verges on threatening the vice president. Yeah. I mean, it, it's... Yeah. But no, just because either. something hasn't happened yet doesn't mean that there isn't a high relative chance of it yeah. being possible. Right. I mean, Absolutely. you know, I mean, and almost every sitting president at one time or another has had a security, you know, I mean, incident. I mean, you know, the Clinton White House was shot at a few times. Uh, you know, I mean, look, they tried to fly a plane into the White House when Bush was yeah. president. I mean, you know, I mean, it goes on and on. Remember, I mean, there were a bunch of people mm -hmm. when there was a plane during my early years as a kid. I seem to remember an incident at the uh, it wasn't the White House because the White House was being worked on and the president was living in uh, another place. And I'm trying to remember the name of it. Well, usually if they can't stay in the White House, they stay at the next door mansion, the Blair House. But Blair House, that's where it was. Yeah, Blair House, and he yeah. was staying at Blair House. And um, uh, the um, there were these, I think they were Puerto Rican maybe, or uh, I'm trying to remember what, what uh, nation they were from. They, uh, they uh, entered the Blair House literally and were going to kill the president. You know, but they didn't get away with it. I don't it. remember that. I don't, you know, I mean, yeah, I, I, don't I, think, I think I think Gerald Ford was shot. Of course, at you didn't remember it because right. you weren't born yeah. yet. Yeah. yeah, but wasn't once once well, one of the two times that Gerald Ford was shot at was with a starter pistol? I think. No, I, I, don't I don't remember. Know. I I think that no. he was shot at twice in like fifteen days. Well, you have yeah, to start. Days, you have to yeah. start somewhere. Two weeks, I guess. <laughs> no, and then the, the president that followed him was. Actually wounded, yeah. Uh, Reagan, uh, you know, I don't, you know. So I mean, it's, it's not new. Um, I mean, look, I don't like it because you know the, the the kind of thing isn't, you know, Trump needs to go away in the the right way. You know, that's right. Yeah, personally, for the nation. I mean, like, I'm not going to act like I would mourn his death oh, you know, because I wouldn't. But that's a personal like yeah. feeling, you know. But right. for the nation, yeah. that's that's not what needs to happen. Tom just raised his hand. Tom, hello, hello. Yeah, let me uh, put my hand back down. Mm -hmm. Lower hand. Yeah, just oh, well, to answer. Thank God, uh, you moved yourself on the screen. Yeah, mm -hmm. just to uh, reply to to Josh's uh, statement. Uh, yeah, there were two attempts on Gerald Ford's life. A one in San Francisco, Sarah Jane Moore. Yeah, yeah. That was a Fromm. real gun. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. the other one was in Sacramento by Squeaky what? Fromm, who was a, yeah. one of um, the Manson yeah. family. And if so, I remember right, the the one in San Francisco, the bullet went like literally missed Donald Rumsfeld, if I remember right. Yeah. yeah. Who might have oh, been his chief staff at the time by like millimeter and struck the building behind his head or something like that. Wow. Because yeah. yeah. uh, I think Rumsfeld was... I think it I think was, was his chief of staff caliber. at the time, because he was really tight with Gerald yeah. Ford when he was, yeah. you know, when they were both much younger, but... Yeah. Uh, and I, I forgot his name, but the person that actually intervened that saved um, Ford's life in um, San Francisco was outed as gay. And uh, I think yeah. he ended up, if I'm not mistaken, he ended up committing suicide, unfortunately. It was uh, <laughs> back in the 70s when but yeah, I think attitudes yeah. towards towards gay people was different. Yeah. You know, the, uh, sure. you know, like with Rumsfeld and with, I mean, it just, I mean, close scrapes and they, you know, changed I the face of the country. I still want to know, and, and, know. I, and I'm, I'm still one of these people who smells something wrong with the first thing that happened to Trump, where he got shot in the air, 
And then he's got this giant tampon over his head at the convention a couple of days later. All right. Mm -hmm. And then about less than a week later, he's got a little like Band-Aid up here. Yeah. And then the next day, he's got nothing up there. And I'm going, if a bullet hit your ear here, wouldn't it do a little bit more damage? It would. It would sail through. But the, but still, there'd be well, a hole Well, you're saying there. it sailed yeah. through, but there'd be a nick there or something. And you go look at him a couple of days later, and there's not even a nick there. Yeah. No, I'm, well, I'm unfortunately, getting un Unfortunately, there has not been any kind of release of any kind of information about, about any kind of medical reports, whether it was actually a bullet that hit him or or any kind of shrapnel debris from the left oh. turn. Unfortunately, we don't have that information. And when you don't have information, oh. then you have rumors. And that's that's mm -hmm. the problem. So if you go to the uh, FBI, the, you know, Tom, if you go to the let, FBI's let, website, let, they, they say he definitely was Will you let Tom finish what he was saying? Oh, please? no, I'm sorry. You, 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 Alan, you have more information? Yeah, if you go to the FBI's website, you can see their, they, they announce um on their what you know out out to the news and on their website that it was definitely a bullet that went through his ear had he had his he he was he was luck was on his side had he he was but turned where like was this. the nick in his ear five My days later <laughs> i don't know come on you know i fell i fell on yeah, my face yeah. i fell on my face a couple of weeks ago and yeah. it's finally just starting to heal up yeah you know yeah. and i didn't get shot in the face now right. he was yeah. just lucky. Well, he, he was lucky. He had his head turned to the right because he had he turned it the That's other way. That's fine, but he. I'm, I yeah. swear to you, I don't think a bullet hit his ear. Okay. Okay. I I can see that maybe a piece of uh, shrapnel from the uh, teleprompter did or whatever. Sure. Uh, but I I it makes no sense to me. You should have yeah. something. Well, he would have had a cut just like you and I would for days. That even if it was a cut from the teleprompter. Yeah. 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 I don't I, I it could have been he could have reached up like that, popped a, a blood capsule they use in Hollywood and put it on his ear. It could <laughs> no, have no, I, no, I don't think he did. No, I don't think that happened. No, he had to be Hey, old. hey, we're hey, talking we're uh, listen listen, it. Tom. We're talking about Donald Trump here. You don't think he would be capable of such a, such a thing? Um, yeah, but I don't think it, under the circumstances. I don't think, it, and, and to get back to your early, actually, this is the reason why I came yeah. on. Mm -hmm. um, you were talking about Vance populace up, saying, "Well, why didn't? Why was it only they're only going after Trump, and they're not only going after Biden and, and, and Harris?" The fact is, the first shooter actually was scouting out both yeah. campaigns oh, and seeing where both. So this was a crime of opportunity. So it's very easily that if if Biden had been the first opportunity for him, Biden would have been the potential ta target. So so that that puts JD Vance's theory in in, in you know just mm -hmm. crazy. He's he's just nuts. He's crazy. But, oh yeah, and yeah, and, 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 the, and the Wall Street Journal today. You read that too. I heard. What actually said that the, the his staff actually yeah. confirmed that the uh, the Haitian story was total bunk, yep. and they and they went with it anyway, even though yep. they had confirmed there was no factual basis for the the Haitian eating pet story at all. They went with it. So Vance is <laughs> totally out to lunch. Hmm. Well, you know, I don't know. I don't know. Oh, here comes Bree. Can I say something, Alan? Yeah. See, this is what bothers me, and I'll follow up with uh, Tom just saying that. And this is what bothers me, Tom, too. He blatantly pushes a lie, right? Puts a whole bunch of people, innocent people, in danger. Right. Basically. And there's no right Like, all right, you can keep doing it. Like what is wrong? There's with no it? consequences. Wrong here. Yep, there's no consequences. I mean, it's like right. so, but it's they're more, they're more, like what about the kids? The schools are being evacuated. That's they, right. It, it's like it's like, but as long as Trump's, yes, he's. It's almost like I hate to say this, 
And then like this guy rallies. They got it. Alex, I'm going to tell you something. And you, you remember when they said Jim Jones? They all drank that Kool Aid. They're mm-hmm. drinking this guy's Kool Aid. Actually, it was Flavor Aid. Flavor Aid. Flavor Aid. Uh, <laughs> because it's like it's. Remember, Paul Krasner fell that out. It was Flavor Aid. Not, you know, Tommy's not old enough to know that. Mm. He, he doesn't know who Paul Krasner is. Like right. Oh well. <laughs> but it just bothers me, like said, they can they can spread lies. But he knows he's it. correct. This guy's spreading lies and putting lives in say yeah in, in jeopardy in Springfield, and and he's not held accountable for it. It's like what's wrong with this world? It's like I I don't get it anymore. Well, I don't know. Don't vote for Trump this time, and you you know. I don't even get it. It's almost like you could break the law, and as long as you get away with it, just do it. Yeah. yeah. When it comes to him, that's what he seems to be the course. I don't know. It's like... Well, that's... I mean, what they push is they just... They really... But, they follow the very typical fascist style play. Absolutely, I mean, absolutely. Every, no matter what well, happens, the truth is not a concern. All you have to do is... Say it was the other side. Just keep saying it. Just keep repeating it. Never admit you were. I mean, just well, go. I, th- go, I think in go. his speech at Nassau today, the Nassau Coliseum, oh, oh God, he know. said that uh, Kamala Harris had called him after yeah. the attempted shooting and wanted to make sure he was okay. And he said that was very nice of her, and I thank her for that. But this is the first civil thing he said yeah. in the whole in the whole uh, uh, mm. thing, you know, in the whole election. Like that's that's the real. Like now you're actually being. You know, why can't they just be civil and just say hey, this is what I'm standing for? That you know, it'd be a whole lot easier to even dissect. He is civil, Tony. Yeah, no, no. I think he always thinks he's on a TV show. Alex, he always thinks like he's got to be a showman for everything. That's his ego. That's all he is, and he and I, you know, and they call him a showman. It bothers me because I don't think he's a very good showman. Like, what is he, would you say, then? Like, Well, he's an asshole. Is what he is. Yeah, yeah. But, like, you think he's, is it more of an ego, Alex, that it's always got, like, with these crowds? Like, you look at him and, like, he loves p- people saying he's great. Like, is it now just his ego all the time? Oh, it's always been his ego. It was, it's been his ego since he was building buildings here in Manhattan. Right. I mean, Richard's lived here a long time. You know this guy. You know, he's always been a. He's oh, you've known him, Tony. He's always yeah. I know. Been I never, a, you know, what? I didn't think he was this narcissistic to take it like this bad. I think so. I, I I'll tell you. That oh, I, I, don't th- know I think this. he's a pathological narcissist. Yeah, there's no question about it. He checks into different hotels and stands in front of the mirror and looks at himself in his birthday suit and said, "God, I'm the best looking guy in the world." <laughs> Do you know that for a fact? No, no. I'm just saying, I, that was just don't my say opinion. something like that because then the rumor gets around oh, that okay. that's what he <laughs> did. And I don't want to be the source of the rumor. Okay. Oh, I don't know. Yeah. This shows the source of a Hey, Bree, how you doing out there? Hi, Alan. Hi, everyone. And you're, you, you look like you're in a hotel room. Yeah. No, no, this is my home. Oh, I see. Okay. But thanks for the upgrade. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What's yeah. No. Uh, let's see. I can show you. Yeah. It's just my room. Oh, okay. But I, I do have a nice view. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. We've been getting some uh, crazy weather here. Oh, oh wow. mama. Are you nice. uh, like uh, way up in that tower? Yeah. Because uh, one of my coworkers told me that. Uh, Malaysians like to have higher, they like to be higher up. Like, oh. the, so the higher the in the building, the more they consider that good. I don't know. Is that true in the States as well? Uh, I thought sure. I wanted to be closer to the ground. The traders get the high floor because they got <laughs> In California, we want to be close to the ground in case of an earthquake. <laughs> now, you, thank you, thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you're renting, right? Yeah, I rent. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You, you, That's a killer view, so to speak. The <clears throat> thing I don't like here is uh, I always have to say, like things go wrong in the apartment, and I have to call an agent 
who then deals with my landlord. I would prefer to deal directly with the landlord, but that doesn't happen. And there's there's this thing where if something is below 150 ringgit, I'm supposed to pay for it. And if it's above 150 ringgit, then the landlord's supposed to take care of it. But the question becomes, well, who determines wow. you know, the degree to which it needs to be placed and the value, you know, and that's never that's never been clear. So interesting. Yeah. Doesn't that translate into 39 cents American? <laughs> I don't. I don't no. know. Well, I'll tell you something. Is, how tell, much is that? I'll tell, I'll tell you something. We're doing here uh, tomorrow is uh, we uh, just uh, purchased a new dishwasher. Ooh. Replacing the dishwasher we have that we put in here when we fo- first moved in here 15 years ago. Hmm. So and I. So you're paying for that? Oh yeah, yeah. There was there wasn't there was there wasn't a, there wasn't a dishwasher in here when we first moved in. The guy, uh, I guess, had no desire to eat here, so he had no reason to clean dishes. So we put mm-hmm. a wine cooler in where the dishwasher should go. <laughs> I've and, seen that. Yeah, I have, I've seen that. I've seen people do that. Yeah, and so we moved the yeah. wine cooler somewhere else. Yeah. And we put in this uh, dishwasher, which okay, and you don't have to tell the landlord that. Hmm. Like that would be something I would have to confirm with the landlord here. I couldn't just do that. It doesn't matter. It's you know, an I'm upgrade sim- to sim- the property. Why I'm would the landlord simply, I'm simply replacing something no. something that's already there. Right. And what I want to go to my landlords and ask for anything? No. <laughs> <laughs> It's, yeah, well, well I know I, how you feel on that. Did Marjorie pick the dishwasher out? No, I picked it out. Oh, good. Well, she no. said, you go pick it out. So I picked it out. So I got one of the stainless steel on the front, and she doesn't like that because she wanted black. You know, well, then <laughs> go pick it yourself. Right. <laughs> what brand is it? It's an LG. That's a good quality. I got it because it has Wi-Fi. <laughs> I don't know what you do with Wi-Fi with a dishwasher. Not really? Except maybe, you know. It's all about how you load the dishes. My my LG washer has Wi-Fi. Oh, this is an LG LG product, and most of the LG products now have Wi-Fi. I don't have it connected to my washer. I have an LG water filter. No, it's a very simple thing to hook up, you know. Right. Yeah, but I, I have my uh, my uh, my uh, what do you call it? my uh, stove is Wi-Fi, and my air conditioner in the bedroom is Wi-Fi, and I simply tell it what to do and it does it, you know. So I don't, I, but I don't know what you do with a dishwasher with Wi-Fi. All I know is that what I don't like about the Wi-Fi is every now and then, my stove, my oven tells me it needs to be cleaned. Because <laughs> I need to be clean, and I'm going. Leave me alone, you know. I, my, yeah. <laughs> you know, it's that's weird. It's not a great idea, you know. So, Tom, how you doing otherwise out there? Doing okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I went to a. Uh, uh, an event uh each year i go to i have a we have an event here in berkeley called the crop hunger walk which we raise money for the um for hunger programs Ber- both berkeley uh it, it locally and and internationally through what's called the church world service mm-hmm. and uh, so they had a uh, little event i went to that uh, at the uh uh Oh, what we call Holy Hill is the the theological graduate theological union, and they were telling us about our programs. About a wonderful woman from uh, Ukraine, a refugee from Ukraine, and we had a wonderful talk. She's an Uber driver in uh, San Jose now, but she was talking about how she they, she was allowed actually to uh, get out from the Russians. The Russians took over her city and uh, she was allowed with a number of people to get all their possessions they gave them 20 minutes to get all their possessions and themselves out and and get out of the country so 
I would be in trouble. By the way, by the way, one thing we didn't talk about today, and we should have because it was one of the more interesting stories, is the whole story about uh, the uh, uh, about the pagers in. Uh, oh, the pra- yeah, yeah. And and the Never fact mind. that I gotta hand it to the I gotta hand it to Israel, man. They really pulled off a good one there. Except that there were some children that died too. Yeah, well, but yeah, I'm saying. No. If you're going to do something, that's something like a plot out of a James Bond movie or something. Yeah, maybe, sure. maybe they can change, change up one for Trump's t- uh, cell phone. <laughs> what? Maybe they could, if they can give a pager to him. Never mind. Never mind. Never mind. Well, one okay. thing, Alex, rem- <laughs> I remember when pagers first came out. Yeah. And you had one that vibrates. Yes. And yeah. you, 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 you put it. You sat on it and, uh, on during the show, oh, and yeah. you gave out the number. Yeah, and had everybody. And then, and then we were calling. <laughs> it's a good thing you didn't have one of those pages. <laughs> 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 that would have been nuts. That oh. might have been not so fun. <laughs> but I'll tell you, it it really is a uh, is it's an interesting story. I mean, it's kind of something yeah. you'd make a movie out of and look. Life imitating art. Anyway, hey, here's our. Can you hear the theme? There you go. Yeah. Yep. And we're uh, we're gonna get rid of y'all. I'm gonna go try and figure out what was wrong with this computer earlier. Uh, in the meantime, all of you have a very nice uh, day, and I hope I see you again tomorrow. Tom, always good having you here. Alan, another fine job of I don't know what. I don't uh, know what. Josh. Uh, it's always nice to have you in the in the house, uh, uh, and of course Charlie, and then Jeff, and uh, oh hey, uh, we don't don't have uh, Tony every night, and when we do, it's a blessing, Tony. Thank you. Boy, can I lie, uh, I Richard? Know. Thank you so <laughs> much. P- please keep calling. We love having you here. And Bree, again, Bree. happy Malaysia, nice. everybody. Give a big wave goodbye, why don't you? And I will give a big wave goodbye at you. And there they go, folks. That's our citizen panel for tonight. Um, the uh, the um, uh, intersection is next with Amy Manuel, and she'll be taking your calls at Skype at, uh, let's see here, Skype it. The number is uh, GabNet Live, GabNet Live on Skype. Uh, We'll see you again right here again tomorrow night. Uh, Same time, same station in life. In the meantime, as always, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Good night, everybody. Have a nice evening.